some type of justice. And this is mut'im, one of them, right? And there's no problem in honoring them from a worldly sense. The Prophet didn't go pray his janazah. The Prophet didn't make dua for him. He drew a line. Look, religion is religion. But there's a civic honor given to him. There's a, a pride, there's a repaying back of the good that you've given me. And the only way I can repay back is to mention you in a way that until the day of judgment, there will be some respect and some looking up to you with sympathy, even if you're being punished for your beliefs. But there will be some looking up to for and some honor that the Prophet gave him. Look, I, just one word, I'll give all of these people back to, uh, to him. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet said in hadith in Bukhari, Allah can help his religion through a kafir. In Allah la yu'yudahad al-deena bi rajul al-fasiq wa bi rajul al-kafir, bi rajul al-fajr, all of these juwaith are there. That Allah helps this religion through people who are evil. Mut'im might have been evil in his religion, but in his other affairs, he was a good man. And he wanted truth, and he wanted... The, the, the tribalism that he believed in was a good type of tribalism. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the fact of the matter is, we need to form relationships with the mut'ims of our times. We need to look around, who are the mut'ims of our times? Who are those that are standing up for civil liberties? Who are those that are standing up for freedom? Who are those that are telling the masses out there, don't be scared of these people, they're not terrorists, they're not evil. Where are our mut'ims? And when we find them, we form allegiance, we form relationships, we praise them, they praise us. But we have the line, we don't praise the religion. Many of these are whatever, they might be atheists, they might be, they might be anything. Not a problem brothers and sisters, not a problem. Here is mut'im, and mut'im is an idol worshipper. Right? In our times, brothers and sisters, I'm going to shock you by saying this, but wallahi, some, sometimes some of these groups that want to support our rights, they have a lot of evil that we don't like. For example, many times it's the homosexuals, many times it's the gay movement. Because they have been persecuted, right, by the other people, they are the ones who are very vocal about types of discrimination. And the fact of the matter is, a lot of times they're supporting the same civil rights that we're supporting, right? And a lot of Muslims balk and draw the line, no, no, how can we get their help? How can we do this and that? If you can get the help of an idol worshipper, then there is no sin that is worse than idol worshipping. No matter what the other, other sins are, you're not approving of their religion, you're not approving of their lifestyle, you're simply coming together on something that is agreed upon by both parties. And the fact of the matter is, their freedoms are our freedoms, and our freedoms are their freedoms. This is the fact of the matter. The same freedom that gives others the right to be different from mainstream society, it is also the freedoms that allows us to be free in this country as well. It's a very difficult, touchy subject, but it needs to be said. Especially in the pressures that we're living in. We are a minority in this land. We are a minority. And unless we form relationships with as many Mutam ibn Adis as possible, right? This is called tying your camel. Tawakkul is in Allah, yes. But we need to have a vision and a plan. And in this story, it clearly shows us that if Allah Azza wa Jal expected His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to get the help of other people, and then He gave Him the help, how about us? And one final point here, notice, and this is SubhanAllah so pertinent. The Prophet ﷺ is all alone outside of Mecca. He's already got two rejections. Twice the visa is denied. He could have done something else. What could he have done? Well, he could have tried another third city. Ta'if has said, no, khalas, go somewhere else, turn your back and try another city. There are plenty of Ardullahi Wasi'ah. He could have even decided to live his life as a, a hermit somewhere. You know, I mean, you'll eke out an existence, find an oasis somewhere, you know, and, and, and live. He could have even emigrated to the land of Abyssinia where Najashi he knew would have accepted him. Correct? Right? He knew Najashi would have accepted him. But he still wants to live in Mecca, the land of persecution. Why? Because in the end of the day, this is his land. This is his people. This is his family. Everything is around that he's familiar with. Despite the pain, despite the suffering, despite the persecution, there is no other place he calls home. Correct? And so he keeps on trying his best to remain there, and he only leaves when literally it becomes a matter of life and death. Isn't there such parallels to us right here? There's nothing haram, brothers and sisters. Don't let anybody make you feel guilty. There's nothing haram for us to want to remain here. 
Despite all the persecution, despite all... Hey, what is this? This is persecution compared to what the Prophet had. Let's not even use the word. Well, it's an insult, right? Despite the minor irritation... Right? This is what we'll call it, right? Despite the minor irritation, and there are clerics beyond who say you should feel guilty for wanting to remain here, right? I don't feel guilty, I'll tell you. I have no guilt at all. I think this is my Islamic duty to remain. Looking at the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, seeing his situation, Wallahi, if he wanted to get back into Mecca, one time, two times, three times he's trying, right? How about us if something happens? to one of our brothers and he wants to be deported, not a problem, you go to the courts, you battle it out. Even if you disagree with so many things, in the end of the day, at least for me, this is my land, this is my people, these are my nation, this is the place I feel the most comfortable. And this is the reality that I think the bulk of us here, and especially all those that have been born and raised here, and all those who have lived here for more than a decade or two, this is where we feel comfortable being. And there's nothing wrong whatsoever, and it's not un-Islamic to have a sense of loyalty, a sense of relationship and camaraderie, even with those who are persecuting you. That's exactly what our Prophet ﷺ uh, went through. Inshallah, with this, uh, we will um, not be able to have time for questions. Inshallah, next, uh, next Wednesday, inshallah, we'll have uh, one question. <laughs> No, no, this is not, that's another one. That's another one. Inshallah. Inshallah, with this we will... Uh...